welcome. Allow me to say right at the beginning that I am not the Triumph TR6 expert. That designation belongs to guys like Chef Tush and Ellen Yakov. What I am is a guy that owns a 1969 TR6 and is trying to bring it back to its original configuration when it left the dealership. Hopefully this video will be helpful to anyone else like-minded. In September of 2020, I finally found and purchased a Triumph TR6 in British Racing Green with a 1969 registration. It was in great shape with almost no rust anywhere. At the time, I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into. I soon found out that it is not the typical TR6 that we usually see. All cars with a relatively long lifespan go through changes, and the TR6 was no exception. The 69, however, is the rarest and most different from the other TR6s. The TR6 began life on September 19, 1968. Numbers 1 and 2 were lost somehow, and the first carbureted VIN number was CC25003. Initially, leftover TR250 and TR5 parts were installed in the cars, until they were finally used up. Then, what would be true TR6 parts were installed after that. Added to this were the changes required almost immediately by the U.S. and their safety and emission regulations. So, by 1970, it was a different car. This started what has become a two-year search for parts that were actually used on a 1969 TR6. It even matters what day your 69 was built on as to what parts were used by the factory or dealer to finish it. They built 2,380 carbureted TR6s in 1968. My TR6 is VIN number CC26945. That equates to about a December 10, 1968 build date. I currently belong to several Triumph clubs and forums with a whole host of owners and sellers opinions. I also have many Triumph books, workshop manuals, and sales brochures along with connections to what I believe to be the best experts I have found so far, Chef Tush and Ellen Yakov. I heartily endorse their YouTube channels, Chef Tush and Rusty Beauties. I am breaking this down into three categories, exterior, interior, and engine compartment. Okay, now this is the group on the exterior of the car. First of all, it came originally with row-style wheels and hubcaps. Um, there was an option also for wire wheels, but the early cars had row-style wheels. Later, uh, they got rid of that. The tires were red-stripe Michelins, 185-15s. Um, those are no longer even available, but you can get red stripes through Universal Tire. The side door mirrors were a rectangular shape, not the newer bullet shape. And they were dealer installed, so they could have been a few different manufacturers of those. The trunk rack was the old style that you see. Um, later on, they came up with a streamlined, modern looking version, but the original cars had the old style trunk rack if you opted for that option. Another odd thing was that the gas cap was magnetic, it just clips on magnetic. Um, the US felt that a car could roll over that could flip open and dump gas all over, so that was gotten rid of right away. The exhaust system, even though it was um, multi-pipes to the Y, there was only one pipe back to the muffler and then double tailpipes coming out the back. Later on, there's double pipes coming back to the muffler. The logo on the back of the car on the fender was white TR6 only um, on the darker cars, and on the lighter cars, it was the black TR6 only. Later on, that was completely changed. In front of the windshield, there's a flip-up vent. Later on, that was completely gotten rid of as well. The hood, or top of the car, was made with a reflective stripe around the doors and the windows. They felt that that would be better for visibility at night and things from the side. Um, later, they got rid of that completely. The windscreen on the car has a little logo on it that it's hard to find, but if you find it, it should say, Triplex Laminated and that would be the front windscreen. In the interior. The steering wheel was painted flat black. It had four holes in each of the spokes 
and it had a leather cover to hide any shininess that was on the wood. The seats had fold-down headrests, which were later replaced. The tonneau cover, because of that, had no headrest pockets. It was perfectly flat except for the steering wheel. The radio was an AM radio, but I've seen that an FM was a possible option. The glove box should have no finger pull below the key slot. Mine needs to be removed. The fascia should be flat matte. The U.S. regulations dictated that nothing shiny should be facing the driver. The shifter knob should be the 1 through 4 type with the reverse. Wrapped in leather, and it should not be the open book griffin one over wood. The carpets were all originally Wilton wool. And the seat belts should be lap style only. There was no shoulder strap. The plinth was very different. It included the ignition and also the knob labels were completely different. The kidney pads originally were designed to fill the entire space. Later they had to put in a cutout to allow hot air to pass to the footwell. The transmission had no overdrive or the A type. The differential was a 3.45 gear ratio. Later it became a 3.7. An interesting fact that I've seen is the speedometer and tachometer bezels protrude from the fascia. All the other gauges are flush mounted. The speedometer highest reading is 130 miles per hour. Later that became 140. Okay, so here is the list of things I've so far found in the engine compartment um, that are unique. One is there's a double vacuum system coming off of the distributor going to the carburetors. Um, one is to uh, make it idle better um, and the other one has a completely different function but there's two of them and they should both be hooked up. The PCV valve has um, a different hose setup. The later cars it had a whole bunch of extra emissions stuff. But the early one just simply had a short hose that came out of the valve cover that went there um, and another really odd thing was that the hoses that were used for the radiator and the heater and all that stuff were called bumblebee or yellow striped hoses which are incredibly difficult if not impossible to find now there is a gentleman on one of the forums that was making them and it was over five hundred dollars per set but you could get them if he has any left the windscreen washer bottle was the oval type and critically it needed to have the black Lucas cap on top of the, the pump. On early cars they used up the chromed rocker covers, valve covers, until they were used up and then they went to silver. So the VIN number of your car, even in 68, you have to figure out whether you have the chromed version, should have the chromed version, or the silver version. The spark plug wires on the early cars were green. Green spark plug wires, not black. The oil change system should be the old canister type, which is a pain in the butt, but um, lots of cars have been changed since then. But if it's going to be original, it has to be that old canister type. The radiator fan on the older cars was yellow with eight blades. Later, they went to a 13-blade red fan for cooling. The carburetors for the 1969 TR6 were Zenith Stromberg CD-2. They are not adjustable. You can rebuild them, but that's about all. Regarding fluids for a TR6, it's possible to get Triumph colors of spray paint to do touch-up and things. I even found a box of original Champion UN12Y spark plugs for my car. You should use a high-octane, non-ethanol fuel, and be sure to add a lead substitute to it. A bottle of the carburetor dash pot oil is also handy to have around. I use a special original oil. It has additives that lubricate. Without it, you are causing damage to your engine. Also, use silicon-based brake and clutch fluid. The normal dot three or four causes damage. My hood latch was missing the backup hook. I see a lot of cars missing it as well. TR6 VIN number CC26805 had fender beating. VIN number CC27158 did not. 
Mine is CC26945, closer to the 26805 with fender beading, so I am adding it to my car. It is originally the body color. Here is a car with beading. The windshield surround on a 69 should be painted the same as the body color. Later it becomes black. Well, that is a very rough list of what I now think I know about the 1969 TR6 and its differences from all the other years. I am making this video for two reasons. First, to document what I've learned to help somebody else with their 69 so they won't waste huge amounts of money like I have. And second, to get feedback from anything wrong with my list and help create as complete a document as possible of the correct parts based on VIN numbers and build dates. Anyone with information I am missing or wrong about is heartily encouraged to comment and help with this endeavor. I will update this video as we find more things out. Hopefully, this can become a 1969 TR6 parts information repository available free for everyone. Just as a fun aside, and to give you an idea of how rare these cars were, in 2022, this past year, I went to the British Car Show um, held in Toronto. There were over a thousand cars there, lots of TR6s, and I was the only 69 in the entire show. And um, my car being so rare and working so hard to get it back to original in my category, uh, it took second place. So there's a fun aside but also a demonstration of just how rare these cars are. With a thousand cars there, I was the only 69 TR6.